Our, our esteemed president is going to uh, say something first. Okay, the esteemed president whom you've not yet impeached. Um, <laughs> give, us, give us time, I know. Okay, I just, I'm, I'm hoping we have some people um, tuning in online as well, but this is the result of seven months of hard work by this building exploratory committee that Form, was formed after uh, the leadership uh, workshop in um, uh, August. And Bill came up with some of the ideas and Angie um, asked six people to work on it. And um, we've had um, uh, Keith Baldry, Linda Barber, Diane Dusick, Sam Dack, um, Bill Robinson, and Ellen Harvey who have <laughs> oh, Ellen Harvey's worked hard. <laughs> She's worked the phones. <laughs> but they have done everything. As you all, most of you know, we had problems with the annex, the trailer out here. And it came to a head, and we really have to find a way to resolve those issues. So they have looked at things, come up with um, several options that they're going to share. And um, I just want you to appreciate the work that they've put in, because they've talked to sewer people, county people, um, you know, trailer removal people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, contractors, designers, and so on. Um, so uh, this, a, a friend shared on Facebook on Friday uh, something that won't resonate completely, but it resonated with me, part of it. <clears throat> she had a picture of two children sitting on a pew in a church, and she said, teach them to love Jesus, teach them to know Jesus, okay? She said, a church without children will die within two generations. And that's what resonated. So think about it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Deborah's kind of prescient, I think. Or I, I'm sure she did this on purpose. I, I'm looking at uh, the words in hymn 318, and uh, one of the phrases is, we would be one in building for tomorrow. And there's another phrase that says to pledge ourselves anew. I thought that was uh, well done, Deborah. <laughs> thanks for coming today. And uh, for those who are on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. Uh, <clears throat> I, I would like every, we're get, we got a weak signal. So if anybody still has their Wi-Fi turned on, if you could please turn that off. Um, we want to be able to be heard from by those who aren't here. Let's go to the next slide, uh, Angie, please. So today we're going to be discussing uh, issues around the physical space of the church. We gave you a, a, a quick summary of, of what we're after. Uh, I've got about 40 slides to cover. I'm, I'll get through them as quickly as I can. Um, and then we're going to have questions at the end. So I would ask you to hold your questions. Uh, for those on YouTube, um, you're welcome to text questions to the phone number on the screen, or you can email them to the, to the email address. Both, both of those are, are, uh, will go to my phone and we can cover those at the end of the presentation. Also, for those of you sitting here, if you'd like to jot down questions as we go along and text them in, that's fine, uh, but I, I'm not gonna ad address any questions until, until the end. Let's go to the next slide, please, Angie. So why is space an issue? 
Well, there are several things that uh, are at, at work here. Uh, the annex is on its last legs. Uh, we use it for religious education and for storage. Uh, the sanctuary can be a bit crowded on mornings, certain mornings. Um, the only gathering space we have outside this room is the kitchen, and that gets to be um, a little bit of a, a, a quandary as well. Uh, so it, it would be nice to have improvements in all those areas, um, and maybe even some improvements to office space. Next slide, please. So Louise in introduced the members of the committee, but uh, our names are up here on the screen. <clears throat> and our mission was to develop non-biased options for obtaining additional space. Next slide, please. So I spent 33 years in the Defense Department and I was trained to give briefings this way. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. And then I'll tell you what I told you. OK. So this is the order of, uh, that I'm going to speak to things this morning. We've got some background information to give you, some initial considerations that we looked at that affect any of the options that we might want to pursue. Um, I'll go through the options. Uh, we have two recommendations to make, and then I'll talk about what the next steps will be after we finish um, today. Next slide. Factors to consider. So we kept these things in mind um, as we did our work. Money, time, and a possible hopeful growth in membership. Um, there's a lot happening uh, at the church now, this spring. We're in the middle of a pledge drive. Um, we're doing a con con congregational assessment. Um, there's this effort to address space, which is going to involve money. Now we've got an anniversary celebration. We've got a work day next Saturday. By the way, Deborah asked me um, to raise your hand if you are able to come next Saturday and, and help with the, uh, with the work day. Excellent. Thank you. So we got, we got a lot on our plate. Next slide, please. So I've listed here um, the goals that we identified for uh, our space needs. I won't read the slide to you. I'll let you do that. Um, our church needs to reflect the fact that we are a welcoming place. Uh, we have to accommodate our physical needs, and we want to look nice. And, and we're a green sanctuary, too. So all, all those things uh, factor into uh, how we might manage uh, improvements to our space. Next slide. Uh, a little bit of um, demographic information. Uh, the city of Aiken has grown uh, quite a bit in the last several years. You can see the population's gone from just under 31,000 to um, 32 and a half. And the surrounding areas in the county have also grown, Graniteville and some of the areas up north. So uh, a good bit of growth in, in the population uh, uh, at large. Our membership, however, has declined. Uh, we've had a number of uh, longstanding members who have moved away or, or passed away. Um, and I can't help but think that um, our physical plant, as it exists now, uh, is not something that is attractive to folks. Uh, certainly the annex is, I don't like looking at it myself. Next slide. Uh, our attendance has fallen off a little too since uh, COVID. Uh, and although some people do now um, join us on the internet who used to be uh, here in, in, uh, in the building. Um, I've listed some square footage uh, information to give you an idea of uh, the size of this, the space that we're now in. Uh, you can see the annex is uh, just under 700 square feet and uh, will address the size of the options that uh, we've identified to replace it and hopefully do some of the other meet some of the other goals that I mentioned as well. Next slide. 
So I want to talk now about some of the factors I, that I mentioned that apply to any of the options that um, we might uh, take. Um, talk about the annex briefly, uh, our waste disposal, uh, how we're zoned, and then give you some background information on money, where we stand financially. Next slide. First, the annex. Uh, we bought it as a temporary addition uh, about 15 years ago. Next slide. It's on its last legs. Um, the heat and air conditioning system works, but we've been told that if it fails, it cannot be repaired again. Uh, Louise mentioned uh, the flood we had a while back, um, which at this point doesn't affect occupying the building, but uh, we're mindful that we might get mold growth um, in the building, and in which case it would not be a suitable place for anyone, let alone children. Um, I guess the other point I want to, want to mention about the annex is we might be able to have it removed at no cost. Ellen spent a good bit of time talking to people who are in the uh, trailer business uh, in the area, and uh, we might be lucky enough to find somebody who would want it and could repurpose it and would be willing to take it off our hands for nothing. However, um, the committee felt that it would be wise to uh, keep in the back of our minds that it's probably going to cost us a couple thousand bucks to have it all the way. We may not have a, a taker at, at the point in time that we're ready to have it uh, removed. Next slide. Uh, waste disposal. We're on a septic system here. Uh, in fact, that the the reason the annex flooded was because the septic tank backed up and liquid ran the sewer line all the way around this building and back and caused the toilet to overflow in the in the building. Um, we looked into uh, hooking up to the city sewer system. Um, the drain field for the uh, septic tank is now out here between this building and Greg Avenue. We can't, you may have noticed in some last six, eight months, I can't remember, we stopped having people park out there because you don't want to be parking on top of the drain field for the septic system. Um, so if we do connect to the city sewer, and I'll show you what the plan is. We hired a plumber to give us an estimate of how to do that. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but if we, if we do connect to the city sewer, then all that land, or most of that land over there, becomes available to us for construction of uh, an addition to the building, for parking or, or other use, which we can't put it to right now. Next slide. <clears throat> so this slide shows where the, um, the lines from this building and the uh, annex connect to the septic tank. Angie's got the thing over here. Sorry about that. Um, the line from, the, from this building comes out here. The septic tank is right in this area. The line from the annex comes around the back of the building along this Greg Avenue side, ties into this line, and then feeds into the septic. And then this thing right here, one we put in after, after, our, uh, after our flood, if the line should back up, it'll gurgle out onto the ground there instead of backing up into the into the trailer or the building. Next slide. Can we move one one slide forward, Angie? There we go. Okay, this is uh, an overhead view of where the line would run to get connected to the city sewer. It would come from the same place, and this is the building here that we're in. It would run all the way out under Greg Avenue, 
and tie into the city sewer line, which is the green line out there. Um, as I said, we hired a plumber to look at that. It would require a lift station in order to push the sewage into the uh, city line. Um, and the estimated cost for that was $12,500. That was a, an estimate that was good for 30 days, but I, I, would, I would think it hadn't been that much time since they gave us the quote that uh, we could still expect something on that, uh, in that same monetary uh, zone. Next slide, Angie. <clears throat> um, we are in the city limits here, and we are currently zoned R15, which is a residential uh, zoning, and we've been grandfathered in as a church um, against that uh, zoning. To attract potential buyers, if we elected to try to sell on the property, whether it be now or sometime in the future, um, we'll get a lot more flexibility if we change the zoning to uh, limited professional. That'll allow uh, those who would not use this as a residence or as a church, it'll allow somebody else, a builder, whoever, um, to be able to buy the property because it would be zoned appropriately. Um, and it, when I get to recommendations, I'll tell you how we feel about that. The, it, I can tell you the city is amenable to it. A couple of the folks on the committee talked to the uh, people in the city who manage those things. Um, they're open to the idea that they, they don't anticipate a problem and it's, it's only $200 uh, to get the uh, permission to do it. Next slide. So, some, I got several slides uh, looking at money. Um, this first slide shows what we have in the bank. Uh, we paid off our mortgage three, four years ago, something like that. So we don't have a mortgage. Um, there are three funds in which, um, and they're just categories that we assign to our money. We've got about $8,500 in a capital fund, which is, um, meant for something just like what I'm talking about. We also have a contingency fund that's got about $45,000 in it and an operating reserve of around $25,000. Um, most of that money is invested. We have about $44,000, dollars $45,000 invested in a UUA mutual fund and we've got a 20000 and change uh, CD, which is going to mature in the next two or three weeks. Um, so we would we would need to if we if we decide to use that money, we would have to liquidate some or all of that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's what I have to say about that. Next slide. I just want to give you a little bit of background on what our regular pledge drives have yielded in the last number of years. You can see that um, when uh, when COVID hit, um, our numbers went down a bit. We had had some recovery and um, you can see where we were as of last year. And Deborah spoke to um, where we are so far in the pledge drive this year. Next slide. So how would we hope to pay for whichever option we might pursue? We have money from current funds that could be applied. UUA operates a crowdsourcing um, platform called Faithify. Uh, and we could put together a, um, I'll call it a presentation. This is a, an online thing. Uh, where we could appeal for money from uh, a wider swath of the UUA. Um, we have to demonstrate uh, the viability of our project and worthiness of it. It has to be consistent with um, UUA 
uh, vision and so forth, but it, it is a possibility of getting some money. How much, I don't know. Um, I couldn't get an answer to that when I asked, but we can certainly uh, attempt to get some money that way. Um, we're going to need to have uh, a campaign of the congregation to try to raise some money. And depending on uh, what those first categories yield, we may or may not need uh, to take out a mortgage. Um, UUA offers um, mortgages, and our previous mortgage was with Security Federal Bank here in, in town. I had a nice conversation with the gentleman who runs that program, and, and they would be happy to uh, lend us money again, uh, assuming we can uh, demonstrate how we can pay it back. Next slide. I'm just going to let you read this. Um, the, the reason we're talking to you this morning is because we need to know to what degree the congregation is willing to support the various op whether or not we might have to borrow money. Somebody's at the door, apparently. I don't know what that is. So um, that's the background section. Um, let's turn now to what the options are. And if we can go to the first uh, slide on the options, An Angie, please. So we identified three basic options, um, and there are variations on the theme on a couple of them, but um, basically option one is replace the annex with some temporary structure. Um, option two, we've got two different choices there. We, we have identified what we call a modest, I'll sh show you some pictures uh, for all those. And then uh, the third option is to sell this property and move somewhere else. And there are three variations. Um, option one is to, uh, as I said, purchase a, um, a trailer or a shed or a prefab building. We, uh, Carl Hammond Beyer looked into this uh, some time ago. It was something called a pole building that, um, anyway, that kind of thing is what we're talking about here. Um, it's a quick fix the quickest fix we can identify and the least expensive uh, but it has some drawbacks as you can see on the screen and uh, we think depending on what we might uh, be able to afford uh, for this option it's, it'll run us somewhere between fifty and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars thousand dollars next slide Uh, this is the um, modest uh, renovation of, of the building. Uh, it, it would be a permanent addition. Uh, it increases the size of the sanctuary. It adds two classrooms and a bathroom. Uh, and it's all in a wing off the side of this uh, building. And uh, it would have storage uh, behind the building, a good sized storage area. Next slide. So th this is a, an overhead view. The shaded area here is our existing building. We would move this wall, the altar wall, back 10 feet that adds space in the sanctuary. We would be able to see. 27 more people. You can see 56 now. You can go 27 more than that. Um, storage area is behind that. And then the wing out here on the side where we have two classrooms and a bathroom. <coughs> Next slide. So um, th this is the floor plan. Uh, it's a little busy, but. Um, Essentially, you can see that um, the altar wall gets moved from here back here 10 feet. Storage area behind. This is what's called a clerestory window. Uh, nice 
big window up in the, in the top, and then the classrooms over here. This is a 22 by 34 foot wing, um, and as I said, this the, the sanctuary gets increased by 10 feet, and then storage is just under 9 feet deep out there. Um, let's let's go to the next slide too, Angie. Um, these are elevations. Um, the first one looks at uh, the building from the front. You're, so you're standing on, on Derby Street out there. And the one below uh, is the back. And I wanted to, to talk about that. Because this, this would be the storage area here. This is the wing that gets you, and then this is what that better story window would look like. It's a nice light, uh, natural light up, up here. This was uh, Sam Dax, uh, brain brainchild so um, and by the way um, to give you an idea of just exactly how big the space is Sam has staked it out out here outside the building so before you leave the property today walk out there and look he's got it all staked off so you can appreciate what the, the size is right Okay, um, next slide, please. So um, we got um, a plan. Uh, we, Louise talked to a, a lady who's not an architect, but she's a architectural designer, thank you. And she drew up uh, uh, some thoughts uh, for how we might have a a major renovation to really expand our space and I'll show you the footprint of that in a minute uh, it certainly meets all of our goals um, you know, the bigger sanctuary gathering space reconfigured the kitchen to be um, more accommodating uh, really a nice uh, nice thing um, and depending on how big we were to um, to make it it's 650,000 to a million dollars. Um, so next slide. This is us now, and this is what's the proposed expansion. In her uh, version, it seated 150 people or something like that. Much bigger than we needed, but but it really would would meet every every uh, of our every one of our goals without in spades um, so but again uh, quite expensive next slide move that's the third third option our property has been uh, estimated to be worth about four hundred thousand dollars we had a couple of folks in the real estate business here in town um, look at it and that was their ballpark guess Okay. Um, that was 20 years ago, yeah, which we're going to celebrate uh, soon. Um, I guess a couple other points I want to make uh, while we're on this slide. Um, I told you what it's what we think the property's worth. We have no idea how long it would take to sell it. Um, uh, and there are a lot of moving parts to trying to sell this and do something else. Next slide. So the first alternative for this option is that we buy an existing church. There are uh, two churches for sale in Aiken now. One uh, is up for $450,000. Uh, Louise looked at it. Uh, it is unsuitable. To, uh, for our needs, um, it's it's old, it's chopped up, uh, it doesn't have a kitchen. It's there was a lot of and 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 parking constraints. Uh, the other church is uh, on Whiskey Road, down uh, past the uh, the Lowe's and whatever down that way. And that that's a million bucks for the, for that one. Um, so we. We don't really have good options uh, for this particular alternative. Next slide. 
So we looked at if there aren't churches to buy or the buildings to buy that we might um, turn into a church. And there really aren't any suitable ones for sale at the moment. Um, we found one that's uh, a repair shop or something. And um, sorry, a car garage. It had it had a, a lift, so we thought you know oh, De Deborah could come up, you know, <laughs> as the sun rose, up up came our minister. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. We, I think there are two lifts in there, actually. Uh, to me, that's worth the $800,000 that, that it would cost. Okay. Next slide, please. And this option is um, sell this and, and build a church. Um, to put it in perspective, um, to replace the square footage that option 2A, the, the renovation with the wing, to replace that we need 3,100 square feet of space. Um, and the construction costs alone are between 775000 and a million dollars to do that. And that doesn't include land. We didn't look to see if there was land, there's land for sale, but we, we didn't price any land. Um, the price tag on just the construction is uh, was enough to get our eyebrows raised. So not a lot of um, hope for this either. Next slide. So I'm going to run through uh, how the committee uh, evaluates each of the options and um, just to share our, our basic thoughts with you. Um, option one, um, the uh, Temporary building uh, is a quick fix, and it's the lowest cost. Um, it substitutes one temporary structure for another. Uh, it doesn't meet all of our space goals. It does not address um, this space storage per se. Um, it would be something that would depreciate rather than appreciate. And it doesn't really show a commitment to our youth and uh, to how we want this place to look. Next slide. The uh, modest renovation is the next quickest way to replace the annex. I told you I could say that more. Lord didn't think I could say next quickest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told her. Yeah, I did. It does. It adds 27 seats to uh, the sanctuary. Uh, we get a classroom and and gathering space. Uh, and we there is some flexibility if money is an issue. Uh, we can construct the storage piece separate from the rest. Um, we pour the slab for everything at once, but we wouldn't necessarily erect um, the storage facility behind. So there's some flexibility there. Next slide. Uh, the major renovation would it it would really be nice, um, but a couple things. Um, there's not enough room to accommodate the parking that we would have to make available for something that big. Uh, and it is very expensive. Next slide, please, Angie. Uh, all three of the sell and move options are problematic um, for the reasons I've cited here on the slide. Um, there aren't any buildings to buy. Uh, it's very expensive. We need to find a buyer. I don't know how long that might take. And uh, there are a lot of moving parts to this, um, trying to do financing and what it would be uh, a real challenge. Next slide. We wanted to put um, some of the money, uh, some of the costs in some perspective for you. Diane suggested that we put this slide together. 
it's a little bit complicated, but um, what it represents is it would cost each pledge unit that's in one column or uh, each member and friend uh, if we were to try to pay for the option outright. So I'll, I'll just give you one example. <coughs> Move over here. Yeah, somebody turned them down earlier. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, that was uh, one perspective. Next slide. Also wanted to um, look at some hypotheticals. If we were to um, put down fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars against each of the options, what would our monthly mortgage cost? We had to borrow the rest. So, for the standalone structure, we said again, it would cost between fifty and one hundred fifty thousand. If we put down fifty, and it only costs fifty, we wouldn't have a mortgage payment. If we put down fifty, and it costs one hundred fifty, it would cost us seven hundred thirty dollars a month. Okay. If we put down a hundred thousand, in one case, it's more than we would need. In the other case, we'd have to borrow fifty thousand, so it would cost three sixty-five. Same with all the other options. You can see mortgage payments get to be really hefty with some of these. If that's all the money we can put down, and again, that doesn't mean that's how much we're going to put down. I just wanted to give you some idea. If if we start putting some money to this, what, we, what kind of a freight are we going to have to carry each month? Uh, the way it works, we're, we're considered a business. Uh, it's amortized over 30 years, but it's reviewed every five. So it's, it's kind of like a balloon. Um, the rate, what, what it means is the rate gets reset every five years, um, but, it, but it's amortized over a longer period of time. But, no. I, I want to hold questions to the end, please. Okay, uh, next slide. So, we have two recommendations uh, to make this morning. Uh, first, we think uh, it's a smart move to connect to the city sewer system and spend the twelve or thirteen thousand dollars. It's, it, in my mind, it's a no-brainer. That's just a good thing to do. Um, and uh, the second thing is, we think we should have the property rezoned. Uh, to limited professional. Again, we get all kind of flexibility um, if we do that. Next slide. Now, um, I said earlier, um, we have to get an idea of uh, to what degree the congregation is behind this. Um, tomorrow, uh, we're gonna put in the mail to all members and active friends 
Uh, we're going to put a, a form that looks very much like what you see on the screen. And we're going to ask everybody to make uh, an anonymous pledge, tell us what they would be willing to pledge anonymously uh, against any or all the options. So uh, I just want to give you some hypotheticals. You might think none of these are a good idea and you don't want to pledge any money to that. That's fine. Send the form back with that. You might think option one is an okay idea and have a, a, some idea of how much you might want to pledge against that. You might think option 2A is an even better idea and you would be willing to put more money to that and other options you might not support. So it, it, we'd like you to address each option to put against that even if it's zero and we hope everybody will mail the forms back. We'd like, we'd like to get them all back so we have a good sense of what the congregation supports and and thinks it can afford. And again, it's anonymous, um, so I, I have no doubt that everybody in this room and whoever's looking at us on the screen now, if, if, if you said I'd put $2,000 to option X, if, if we turn around and ask for that, you'd, you'd do that. I, I know that. Our pledge experience for our regular pledge drives have told us that Unlike a lot of churches, if people say, I'm going to give you 10 bucks, you get 10 bucks. So, but again, it's anonymous at this point. We're just built the door. Today, you, you'll be able to do that. We're also recording this on YouTube, so you can go to YouTube.